Now we're going to consider an example uh, where we work out a bunch of minors and then we're going to apply some linear constraints and we're going to see the behavior of the system under a linear constraint or a system of linear constraints. So let A be this matrix, relatively simple matrix, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0. Well, let's compute its minors, right? The leading LPMs of A are, well, the first one, the first order one is just one. So the first order is just one. That was easy. The second order, so it's this leading two by two matrix, the determinant of this guy. So it's 1, 1, 1, 0. And the determinant of this, you can calculate, you know, 2 by 2s will be 1 times 0, minus 1 times 1 is negative 1. So already, already we can see that this thing is going to be indefinite, right? It's, it's failed to, to bring about a correct sign pattern. Uh, and the third order, The determinant 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0. Well, that's actually equal to 0. Uh, and the way to see that is that we'll add this column, the third column, to the second column, and you get the vector 2, 2, 2, which is a multiple of 1, 1, 1, right? And so these columns are not linearly independent and therefore the determinant has to vanish. The determinant of the full matrix has to vanish, right? So we conclude that A is indefinite. And that's basically all we can say about it, right? But by our theorem. But now let's consider a situation where we have a linear constraint or a system of linear constraints, right? Um, so consider now the constraint set zero is equal to bx is equal to this matrix b is going to be two negative one negative one zero one negative one right well i've got this and i've got x1 x2 x3 Right, I want to know the definiteness of our quadratic Q of X equals X transpose A, where A is above. I want to know the definiteness of this subject subject to this constraint. Uh, so we form the bordered matrix. Right? This is the, the steps that you'll take. You'll form this bordered matrix. Well, I've got two constraints, so the first block is going to be a 2 by 2 block of zeros. The block next to it is going to be the B matrix, so I put B here. 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1. Now I put the transpose of this guy, so it'll be 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative one. Now I have one. Now I put in the A matrix, which is just one, 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 zero, two, one, two, zero. That's a big matrix. That's already a five by five. Uh, and we're going to want to know principal minors of it, right? Um, but how many principal minors do we have to actually calculate? So by the theorem, that we sh saw in the last video, uh, we need to check the last n minus m equals, well, n was 3, right? So we have a 3 by 3a, three and we have two constraints, so m is 2 equals 1, leading principal minors. So we have to check the last leading principal minors to determine the 
definiteness. Well, the last principal minor is just the determinant of this matrix. It's a big matrix, but we can still calculate its determinant. Now, once we get to 5 by 5 matrices, uh, even though there are a bunch of zeros in here, doing Laplace expansions of the determinant starts to become a problem. Um, so we're going to avoid doing a Laplace. So in this case, we're going to calculate. So we must calculate. determinant of H. And determinant of H is going to tell us exactly the uh, the behavior of this guy. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do Gaussian elimination. And we'll keep track of how many row swaps are used. Right, because then the determinant of H is going to be equal to negative one times the number of swaps times the determinant of the row echelon form that we acquire from Gaussian elimination. Uh, and, and remember that the reason, remind yourself why we have to have this negative one here, right? The reason is because we keep multiplying by these permutation matrices, right? And we've shown before that the, their determinant is negative one, right? And we're just applying here, right? We're just applying the multiplication law for determinants of matrices. So we start off with H. Um, so let's look at this H back here. Uh, well, uh, the first thing is we want to pivot in the very first column, right? Uh, to get that pivot, what we're going to do is we're going to swap this guy. So we're going to swap. So this guy is going to get row 1, and this guy is going to get row 3. And that does my first swap. So I count, I have. I have just performed one swap. So after after the first swap we have. So keep that number in mind. Right, and be careful if you do multiple swaps all at the same time, you still have to count them all uh, individually. You can't just do like a big swap and not have to worry about it. So the matrix that we have now is two zero. 0, 1, 1, right? These guys didn't change. We have 0, 0, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 0. Uh, and now I need to clear out this pivot uh, or the pivot column. So we're going to add one half of row one here. And we're going to add one half of row one here. And what do we get? Well, we're going to write a little bit smaller now to conserve some space. We get two, zero, one, one, one. Zero, 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 one, negative one. Zero, zero, two, negative one, negative one. Zero, one, three halves. 1 half, 5 halves, 0, negative 1, 3 halves, 5 halves, 1 half. So I got a little cramped. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so that completed the first pivot. Now we move over to the second column. We need a pivot there. This is going to be my pivot, so now I have to do another swap. So I've now performed two swaps. So this is going to get row 4. And this is going to get row 2. And that gives me the matrix 2, 0, 1, 1, 1. Nothing changed there. 0, 0. Oh, wait, sorry. 0, now 1 here. 
I have three halves, five half or uh, three halves, one half, five halves. This guy stays the same. Zero, zero, two, negative one, negative one, and now this becomes zero, 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 one, negative one. Down here, I've got zero, negative one, three halves, five halves, one half. That didn't change. Uh, and now I've got to clear out the column, of course, so I add one row two. which will give me the matrix 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 3 halves, 1 half, 5 halves, 0, 0, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, now this will be 0, uh, and when I added one of this row, it turns out I'm going to get all threes in this last row. The last little bit of that row. Uh, and now I want to, and now I've already got a pivot here, so I can just work with that. Um, so I'm going to subtract off three halves of row three. And what do I get now? I get two, zero, one, 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 zero, one three halves, one half, five halves, zero, zero, two, negative one, negative one, zero, 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 one, negative one, zero, 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 nine halves, nine halves, is what I'll have in the long run. And now, uh, now I've got to pivot here, one, and so I Subtract so 9 halves row 4, and what do I acquire? And this, this clears it all out. Uh, and what do you get? Well, you get this matrix 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, and this will be in row echelon form. 3 halves, 1 half, 5 halves, and in particular it's a diagonal matrix, so we're going to be able to compute its determinant rather efficiently by just looking at the diagonal. 0, 0, 0, 0. And here we'll have a 9. So the determinant, uh, determinant of the row echelon form is going to be, well, it's the multiple, it's the, we multiply all the diagonal entries, right? That's the determinant of a upper triangular matrix. It's 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 9. And that's going to be equal to 36. Now remember that the determinant of h is equal to negative 1 times number of swaps, which was 2, right? Remember that we only did 2 swaps times uh, the determinant of the row echelon form, right? So since we only did 2 swaps, this is equal to negative 1 squared times 36, we've calculated. And so this is equal to just positive 36, right? Well, by the theorem, the sign of the term of h is negative 1 to the m is equal to 1, right? So it has a positive sign. Uh, so we conclude that Q of X equals X transpose A, that A matrix we had, is positive definite on BX is equal to zero. Right? And that's, that's the general idea of how you will apply something like this.